Hello again. All right, round seven. So, what to say? It was an interesting round, but I will actually start with uh, Dubov playing, uh, I don't know how to call it, the Dokovic defense, right? Djokovic defense. So, uh, I've seen that he beat, that he won, uh, um, actually lost quickly to Giri. And here I am thinking, oh man, I'm like so smart. Uh, I mentioned yesterday that, okay, Giri had a rebound against Caruana and here he's winning again and wow and then i see aha not not so many moves were played so <laughs> well i'm making it short apparently someone from dubov's team had covid i believe so either had covid or uh, high suspicion of covid and I, I believe he had and then they were asking dubov to wear a mask he said no yada 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 Giri won the game. So, all right, maybe it was still Giri's momentum from Caruana. I don't know, just laughing. But, all right, I'm not expressing any opinion, right? I mean, uh, my only opinion, I think you should probably respect others, but I don't know. I, uh, everyone is being attacked by everyone. But, yeah, just weird, right? So, this was one good win by Giri, and uh, I don't know, I was trying to be polite and make little laugh uh, jokes about it. But in seriousness stuff, okay, Kawana played quite a decent game and won, so that's good for him. But the big the, the big changes were actually at the top of the uh, the table. Mamedero had a draw, but Vidit, pretty much leading the tournament since round one, lost, and Carl said that yeah, I don't think I don't think has been playing great chess, but I mean, uh, he's just so strong that you know it's like when he's playing okay, it's pretty much enough to win most tournaments, right? Just playing okay for him is enough, and I think this is another example. I cannot say oh, Carlson is playing amazing. He's playing okay, and now he has the sole uh, sole lead of the tournament with five out of seven after uh, beating the young. Indian star Frago. Okay, we will get to see that a little bit. I thought that this game, Van Foist against Vidit, it had several interesting moments and... Okay, well, let's get to see that. Alright, okay, oops, that was too fast, let's go quickly, uh, slowly. So this was, okay, Nimzo Quincy 2 line, yeah, this is quite popular stuff, and all right, uh, bishop a6, I think this is okay line. I mean, I, I wonder, I mean, bishop b7 for certain also. Just uh, I thought, you know, everyone, everyone and their sister seem to be playing this line. And I mean, it looks quite okay. I actually lo looked at that quite a bit some, I don't know, few months ago, I guess. Okay, I'm certain Vidit knows this line way, 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 way better than me. Bishop b7 is another alternative. Okay, knight e5, queen d6. I mean, I'm just trying to see to see the times. Well, he was spending quite some time on this move, right? Like 20 and a lot minutes. So maybe this knight e5 was somewhat new for him. Yeah, again, bishop e6. I wonder why he didn't play that. Anyhow, I will let them analyze all this theory and have all the fun. Okay, yada yada yada. It looks like a bit better for. Um, for white, by the way, now this yada 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 stuck in my head, so probably I'm gonna repeat it quite a lot during the, uh, this video. Alright, here. Well, being down already 45 minutes on the clock, okay. But the position, maybe not so horrible, especially not when you got to play, um, yeah, e5 soon. So I'm not analyzing this too deeply. Okay, I, I believe I believe this is not that great, right? This is quite important to figure. Uh, um, anyhow, yeah. Now now I think Black's position is acceptable, but the time is gonna have big importance in this game, like really really big importance. I I thought White was a bit better, but. Not anymore. Actually, this position. Well, I just I, I 
I personally really care about the structures. Like, I mean, some people care more about initiative and whatever, but I think if you have good structure, all right, everyone has their taste. So this feels awesome against the dark color bishop. Well, I, I love. I think I would prefer black here. I mean, maybe the position unclear, but yeah. And okay, this move, very natural move, played quite quickly. Probably not that great. I mean, bec if I really like this so much, then what am I thinking for white? What am I thinking for white? Okay, one second. I wish it was coffee, it's just water. But I really need it. So, white want to go a 4 White needs to open this dark color bishop. It's typical, natural, logical. I think knight e6 is what I would like. Because, yes, yeah, structure is important, but you know... Ah... Uh, Outpost, outpost, this looks so tempting. And f4 I don't think is working, right? I think knight e6 was a better choice. And yeah, probably both players didn't play that great here. Rook take is, is a good move, really good move. I mean, white has horrible structure, oops, horrible structure. The structure makes me feel like, Ugh. but the activity Ah, man, this is no joke. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was looking at it quite a bit, like thinking, okay, black needs to be okay, white structure so horrible, but this activity is no joke. Especially here, like, all right, white, white played quite quickly, bishop f2, which, okay, doesn't feel right. I mean, it's it doesn't feel right, it is just not right, but... Even just from pure feeling, you know, forget about it, those are really strong players and so on, but being that passive, oh man, this move is like really, really, really strong for white. Like, the knight is now horrible, I mean, okay, if you can make some magic, get the knight to c5, okay, you're gonna hear me say other words, completely other things, but with the knight on c7... And just some practical play, like, I mean, okay, rook d8, bishop d6. Yeah, this is just bad, like, okay, I'll just show this stuff here, here, here. And now what? I mean, this is losing immediately, right? Um, this also very bad. Rook d7, if take, take, bishop d6. I mean, maybe there are better stuff, but, and... And if knight e8, then, yeah, I think bishop f3, and, okay, those bishop, just, I remember I read in some book, oh, which book it was, it was awesome, like, uh, one of the best ones, like, just saying, like, the bishop is just a murder, I, I will quote that one, which book it was, I don't know, yeah, but those bishop, forget about it. I mean, bishop takes c4, bishop f2, and yada yada yada. So, no, like rook fd4, actually, surprising, I mean, such strong player, and players that like to play with the initiative, and playing bishop f2 quite fast. Alright, I mean, I, I want to go to critical moments soon. Okay, this position. I think black, black is okay here. I think so. Uh, maybe, maybe I need to analyze it way more. I didn't. But, okay, I understand the pair of bishops. I understand the pass pawn. Everything is awesome. But I also understand this. The knight is great. The bishop is going to be blockading the d pawn very well. The e3 pawn is weak. Ah, I mean... Yeah, black is black is not bad, eh? Knight e4 was played. I think I like bishop d7 more. I mean, if you don't intend to take, and maybe now n not taking is right because d6 maybe the rook penetrates from the c file to the seventh rank. So why you play knight e4 if you don't uh, um, if you don't really want to capture on g3, then don't play. 94, right? 
Um, all right. Okay. G5. Yeah, I mean. Okay. I'm I'm moving, 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 moving. Yeah, and this this innocent move is losing the game. I mean, okay, Vidit had one and a half minutes here, and he overlooked an idea that completely cost him the immediately cost him the game. I mean, after Rook F8, yeah, I prefer I prefer White, but okay, again, the Bishop on D7 is blockading the pawn. It's really important to to understand and acknowledge that. Like, I think at some point in my life, you ask me, I'll say, Roland, what are you talking? You're crazy. White has the pair of bishops. The D pawn is a fast pawn. It's... No, but okay. Well, I think it's less simple. Less simple than that. Uh, uh, well, it, it is not as simple. Let me correct that. Yeah, it's not as simple. Anyhow, after rook c8, it is simple. And... Yeah, Vidit, I guess, 95 in the opening, he was burning a lot of time. So I don't know what he knew and what he didn't, but he got an okay position, then he got not okay position. Rook FD4 would have been really strong for white. Then again, okay, now losing. So this game had, yeah, I don't know, too much back and forth, I think. Now white is losing, well, because of this square d6 played and i mean okay queen e5 just game over right but queen e6 also game over just game over i mean what to do with the knight bishop c6 okay take and no more blockading for the pawn yeah no more blockading for this pawn and knight c5 yeah i mean yeah, this just sucks. Like, seriously. I mean, the f6 pawn and the f7 square. Yeah. So, that is enough. Yeah, quite quite disappointing, uh, I think, for Vidit. Um, he was somewhat worse in the opening, but got to be okay. And I think, actually, instead of queen e6, if knight e6, maybe I take black. Maybe I take black and yeah, it was a little bit under pressure after that and like this rook c8, rook c8 just really cost him just losing immediately. So yeah, Vidit was looking really great, but I mean he played he played uh, six games before this one. He really looked great, but yeah, that's a big one. And the other one, okay, it is Carlos saying that... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's really amazing, right? I mean, if he's just playing okay, he's probably winning most, most tournaments out there. That's that's uh, that's what you have when your level is 28.50 and above. So let's see his win with the black pieces. All right. So I, I think for the I think for the young Indian player. It was probably the first time he has played against Carlsen. Maybe in in a official game. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think so. And okay, it's always difficult to to play the world champ, right? Especially well, when you're that young and so on. Okay, Queen's Gambit accepted, and okay. I mean, yeah, we're not going to discuss this too much. I mean, uh, D takes C5 is obviously something to be played. I mean, maybe maybe decent maybe decent choice against Magnus. I don't know. Kamnik played this against Kasparov in their match and, okay, the game was a draw, but was winning. Of course, it's equally stuff, but okay, simple, normal play. A4 is the main move. B3, okay, it's another line. Not, not one of the very main lines, I believe, but the line. Yeah, this bishop A3, oh man, I was really surprised when I've seen it and then looking a bit at the database, 2021, yeah, there was, there was, this is a, Carlsen was playing this in one of the online, many, many, many tournaments uh, uh, against Aritmeev. So Carlsen actually played this with White. Okay, Aritmeev took, took. Some other, some other decent players have, have played this. But apparently this Bishop A3, okay, not such a amazing new idea. Okay. Uh, 97 is 
I think needed because what does white want? White really wants to capture and give black some, well, that, that arrow is not needed, but just give black some weak pawn on c5, right? I mean, something like that. Okay, there will be some weak pawn on c5. Yeah, I think nobody's going to object that if you are white. So, take is a possibility. Obviously, white wanted that. And here, this d5 is the big idea. I mean, capture, capture is quite needed. Yeah, I guess if b5, you just capture on e6. Capture, capture. Yeah, this there was a game of Adivan, right? I, I'm looking to see what I prefer. In 2018, there was a game of Adivan, a uh, super strong uh, Indian grandmaster. Okay, he won with he won with white. Okay, I mean the the main the main thinking is that yeah, it's just not so easy for black to to develop. Hmm. It's not so easy for black to develop here like this this I, I was optically it looks like black should be okay but if you cannot develop it's not that okay so Carlson played rook b8 okay and I really think not not many not really ga no games really here okay I thought that white has to try at some point e4 e5 I, I, oh, e4 and push Queen c2 was played, okay, a logical move, b5, yeah, I don't know which rook to d1, somehow I like more rook a d1, but I don't know, yeah, again, it looks, it looks, it's funny what I'm gonna say now, but I'm gonna say that the bishop on d5, it is not a knight, I, I, I think, I think, I think once, uh, maybe maybe it's a Yermo quote, like, you know, it's a bishop on the, it's not a knight. And many times bishop, tiny bit gets stuck there. So the bishop looks awesome. It's not really. Give me a knight on d5. We, we, we will talk differently. Okay, I, I can say that I think white didn't really, didn't really find the, uh, the plan to go with. I, this a4, I'm not. I'm not such a big believer of this move. I mean, maybe e4, maybe just rook c1. Okay, life goes on. This a4. Okay, I thought. I thought. By the way, this was an interesting choice. I mean, obviously, not easy. And maybe, maybe Carson was worried about some stuff on the king side. But I think this is a typical way to consider stuff. But okay, h6, I guess just not allowing knight g5. By the way, knight g5 was an interesting idea, but I'm trying to make it reasonably simple. Okay, queen b6 is a good move. You don't want to create weaknesses with b4 for now. Okay, finally e4. I thought I thought maybe it could, could have been played earlier. Rook e8 is a really good move. And it is interesting that this queen d2 seems like a mistake. I mean, because white white kind of got stuck here, and I'm not joking about that. White black white cannot really go e5, cannot really improve here, and black does have ways to push. I mean, what was better? I mean, okay, e5 was a possibility, bishop f8, and now. And now, I mean, even, okay, that's some crazy, I looked a bit with the computer, some crazy computer ideas, like, just move the bishop away so the d5 square is available. I don't know how practical it is for someone to play that way. There were other ways also, but, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I mean, the, if I need to put a title for this game, it's going to be a surprising one. A stuck bishop on d5. Anyhow, this b4 and take this this is this is the right moment for black to get this done uh knight take b6 takes on f4 yeah and i mean i think i think very soon here if the game is over maybe this was last chance last chance for 
white to tie and okay white is worthy I mean of course of course this is ugly but in the game okay the world champion played here an awesome move just game over I mean this is so awesome because white is just stuck that's it I mean this knight has no way back into the game I really really I'm saying it again because it really amazes me that is my conclusion from this game this bishop on d5 looked so pretty you know it was uh, uh, um, yeah the main reason why white lost the game just keeping it there too much instead of probably pushing e4 e5 moving the bishop earlier okay this is just over this is just over and okay yeah usually you get no chances against Magnus I hope I haven't missed anything big in the analysis but yeah, I just didn't look after that it just looked pretty much over okay so you know somehow this always happens at some point you get to see Magnus leading the tournament alone we'll see if he's ever if he's ever going to lose that spot usually it's not but okay we have some more games from a chess fan you know I didn't want this to happen because the tournament is really interesting right when you see other people leading and Magnus is chasing but yeah usually it doesn't last for so long all right so we'll see if uh, Magnus got to his spot if, if that is it for the tournament We'll see what's going to happen with Dubov and the Corona variation, COVID variation, if it's one-time event or, well, maybe that's it for him in this tournament. I don't know. Well, we'll be smarter after the next one. So, I'll see you then. Bye.